Okay, welcome back to the second section of today's Motor Summit presentations. And this block here is now dealing with drive systems, but not electric drive systems per se, but it's actually looking at alternative drive systems, hydraulic, pneumatics, and as a third part, we're looking at an application which will be pumps. The first presenter will be uh, Professor Johan Lodewijks from uh, the University of Applied Sciences in Luzern. He actually got his PhD in 1994 from RWTH and, and he was working at one of the world leader in uh, hydraulic motor or the hydraulic uh, drive systems, Bucher Hydraulics. Um, he's since 2011 a uh, professor at the, uh, the Division of Machine Technology in Luzern and he's also giving lectures at ETH Zurich at the Institute of Professor Konrad Wegener. So I'm looking really forward to your presentation and I give you the floor, Mr. Ludwig. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, all together. It's a great pleasure for me that I can show you some, or I give you some information about new concepts for efficient hydraulic drives. As we all know, uh, at state of the art, the hydraulic drive uh, has a very uh, yeah, low energy eff efficiency. Therefore, uh, I can address uh, some um, yeah, problems who shows why it is in this way. First of all, uh, such a valve-driven uh, uh, um, cylinder can't handle driving loads coming from outside. Uh, the only thing what we can do is we throttle them away and so we have uh, more and more heat in the system and no benefit from it. The second point is uh, the throttle lot losses in, inside the valve itself. Each uh, uh, driving edge uh, uh, producing such throttle losses and, and the proportional or servo valve like this here uh, has uh, in the end four of those driving edges. And you can imagine what it means. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, we very often find uh, a constant hydraulic power production. Um, this is a very you know, cheap investment on one hand, but you pay it day by day with uh, energy losses, uh, uh, of course. So uh, at the end, we have, you see it on the right side, uh, an, an efficiency around 20 to 30 percent. And uh, that's no good uh, result. So uh, we need a good solution strategy for the future to come up with this uh, efficiency, of course. Yeah, first of all, we have to think about the possibilities of energy recovering also with hydraulic drives. I will you sh show later. Then uh, the second point is that uh, we have to avoid throttle losses wherever we can. Only use them so yeah, in a minimum as possible. And of course, uh, we need demand basis power production um, where uh, a lot of strategies are always on the market, uh, but we have to use them more and more. And so at the end, I, I can uh, uh, show you today that we, can, uh, that we are able today to bring up this uh, energy efficiency to over 80% also with the hydraulic servo drive. Let's have a look at the uh, typical application for uh, uh, such a hydraulic system is an excavator. And the excavator today, if you drive it with a diesel engine, uh, you know, the biggest losses are uh, occur directly at the, at the diesel engine itself. And so for a long time, it was no big discussion about uh, energy in the system uh, because we have it, uh, we, we lose all, uh, so much in the diesel engine already. But times are changing and more and more we are see, seeing now that uh, also electrical motors coming into machines like this. Uh, and uh, this means uh, uh, in the future there will be a discussion about uh, the um, energy losses of the proportional wealth, of course. And I think that it's a good idea to start already today to think about what can we do in this topic. For a better understanding how a hydraulic will work, in, uh, I will give you some idea uh, about uh, the, the analogy of driving technologies. Each driving technology uh, using a potential and a flow parameter. Uh, in electric, of course, there is voltage and current, but we have the same thing also in the hydraulic. The voltage there is the pressure and the current there is the volume flow. 
And also for a linear or rota uh, rotational mechanic, we have uh, parameters like this, and we have force and velocity, and torque and angular velocity. Yeah, and then, if you want to have an idea uh, what is power in this driving system, you only have to multiply potential by flow, and you can do this in each of those uh, technologies, and at the end to have a watt, the same unit in, in, uh, in, in each driving technology. This analogy, uh, analogy is going further on. If you uh, take a look at the resistance uh, in the system, you um, divide potential by flow, and uh, you, so you have an, now an idea what is a hydraulic resistance and how can I calculate it. You need pressure and divide it by volume flow. Inductance also is very interesting. Therefore, we take the potential uh, and uh, divide it by flow per time. And for example, if you now take a look at the linear mechanic, uh, if you do this with force and velocity, result is the mass. So mass in the mechanical, linear mechanic is nothing else than an inductance. And uh, for rotating me me mechanic, it is uh, the inertia, for example. Last of it, uh, capacity. Uh, there we have to divide flow by potential per time. And uh, then you have also the results of all those driving technologies here in my slide. On the next step, now I want to give uh, or take a look at the whole hydraulic system and give you an idea uh, what uh, is uh, the main um, yeah, uh, thing, what, the, what is it doing in your system. And uh, the main function of it is a gear function. If we take a look here, you see uh, on the left side with the E, the electrical motor connected with a small pump V1. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have a big motor V2 and we're driving something, for, exa for example, a wheel. So if you start the system now, we have a volume flow coming out of the pump going on the high pressure side. And as we have seen just uh, before, if we uh, uh, multiply this volume flow by high pressure, we have the power. And this power uh, we can work with on the uh, motor side now. If you now take a look at the mechanical uh, parameters on the left side, we have a very high rotational speed at a low moment. Uh, and on the other side, on the t uh, station two, we have uh, a, a small rotational speed with a very high momentum. But uh, if you multiply this, you get the area, and you see the area is exa exactly the same. So at the end, we can say uh, the ingoing power is, is the same than the outgoing power um, if we forget the uh, uh, losses in the system for, for a moment. But what I want to show you now, or give you as an idea, is to take a look at the uh, ratio, uh, what, what we have now um, in, this, uh, in this gear. Because you can calculate, of course, with the, um, with the rotational speed, you can calculate this with the moment, but you can at all calcul also calculate uh, with the displacement volumes of the components. So if you take the components, you already have the gear ratio to define the gear ratio by the choosing of the right components. You need nothing else in the hydraulic. So at the end, you see we have a fluidic uh, mechanical gear, gear uh, uh, and uh, so you can understand hydraulic systems and use them in your applications. Ah, let's have a, sorry, let's have a more uh, clear look in the combination between the electrical motor and the pump. Yeah, therefore I uh, take a look at this uh, um, characteristic field of the servo electric motor and uh, com uh, compare it with the uh, uh, piston pump, and you see they are very familiar. We have nearly the same rotational speeds, we have nearly the same moment, we have uh, uh, a range uh, area of permanent load, but we also have the possibility of going into overload uh, or in a peak load uh, uh, area, and so they are working very properly together, and uh, yeah, we will, I think, in, find in the future more and more this combination of a, 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 a electric servo motor with a hydraulic pump. If you take a look at the linear motors, uh, they're different, it's uh, very bi bigger. Uh, the electrical motor is more and more uh, linear, but uh, the hydraulic servo cylinder is, uh, uh, yeah, you have a lot of non-linearities. 
there are non-linearities already at the edges of the of the valve, but uh, one is very uh, yeah you see it um, with one uh, or very clearly at the different areas of the piston. On the left side of the, we have a big uh, piston uh, area. On the rod side, we have a smaller one, and this is a nonlinearity we'll find at the end at uh, different behavior of this cylinder. Uh, if we take a version which is more symmetrically, so if we take a cylinder with a double rod, then we have again uh, same size of, of area on both sides of the cylinder. And then even the dynamic model of uh, such a hydraulic drive system is uh, just the same than uh, a motor, electrical motor system. At the end, it's a PT2E system, uh, but what we can find there. The difference is uh, then uh, the damping factor, for, for example, because the damping factor in a hydraulic system is uh, yeah, um, very, very small. Uh, it's principle related that we don't have very uh, big uh, dampings inside the, si the system itself. Um, electrical motor is, is there, it have a lot of inertia masses and that's why you have a very, very big damping factor. Um, and so it is not so easy to control a servo valve drive. Uh, let's say me, uh, it, it's, uh, a servo valve drive is not a uh, a farm horse, it's more a nervous uh, race horse. And so we need a very powerful controller. Uh, it must be very fast. Uh, this must be faster than uh, the dynamic of the pressure uh, um, changes inside uh, the system. Otherwise, we have no chance to, uh, con to control this the behavior of the system. Um, but today, we, ha we, are, uh, we have controller like this. We are um, working with, with uh, very fast controllers with 2K or more as a cycle uh, dynamic, for example. Now I want to come back to our first question. What can we do with uh, efficiency in a system like this? Uh, as long as we st stay uh, with this uh, uh, four-stage valve, uh, which is controlling each edges, uh, yeah, all together because it is uh, mechanically uh, connected, we have no chance. What we have to do here is, uh, and I can show this in, in modern systems already, uh, if you take a double valve control, that means instead of one big valve, we take two smaller ones and control only one chamber of the cylinder. And then we have very interesting opportunities. This decoupling of the control edges uh, has a result, for example, that in a lot of uh, um, operational points uh, of, of driving the system, I can open one of those elf valves completely. And this means I, I reduce the, the throttle losses uh, in this situation massively. Um, and even uh, a recuperation is possible uh, if I have a driving load uh, uh, who is uh, on, on the cylinder rod, I can open the, the, the valve on the other side and uh, the one chamber of the cylinder is working like a pump and brings back volume flow, flow to P, to the uh, uh, power source of the system. And uh, yeah, if you have a situation like this, you have a, a recuperation of the energy and you can use it a second time. If you go to one thread further, uh, you can also take uh, this uh, yeah, network of check valves and then uh, it is possible that, for, for example, a volume flow is going from T, from the tank, through this check valve directly into the cylinder and we don't need to go through the valve itself. So we minimize the throttle losses again. And then you see it at the bottom. Uh, the, uh, Efficiency is rising again, uh, and we are even with a, um, with a um, valve-derived uh, cylinder, we are coming to uh, efficiencies um, nearly 80%. And then I have a second very good uh, news <laughs> from the pump side. Um, we, uh, we find now more and more uh, pumps on the market uh, working with the floating cup principle. 
Uh, here you see this schematic here, how, uh, what is the main idea of this principle. Uh, we have a completely symmetrical construction of this pump. You see this uh, uh, yellow uh, pistons are all fixed on a plate in the middle and uh, they will rotate all together by a driving shaft. And uh, this symmetry uh, con uh, construction uh, has a result that the blue uh, um, pressure uh, forces inside uh, on the high pressure side, they compensate itself. You have no uh, resulted loads on, on the bearings. And this is a, you know, a very big step forward for a hydraulic pump uh, design, I, I would say. I can show you one of the first results here from the Bucher Hydraulics. The AX pump is the new one now on the market, and the characteristics are fantastic, I would say. Uh, you have this, uh, uh, or you can use this one uh, up to 500 bar, so it's useful for mobile applications, it is useful for stationary applications, uh, and uh, you have a mechanical efficiency of uh, 99%. Uh, that is nearly the same that you have for the mechanical gear. And even if you uh, take the, uh, in calculation the um, losses of self-lubrication, what you need for each pump, of course, uh, you come down to only 93%. And this is uh, already a very, very good uh, result. You see here um, the comparison with this uh, AX pump with the other, uh, for, for example, radial piston or bent piston uh, pumps, also quality, good from, from good quality. And you see, not only we have a very, very efficient, high efficiency, this blue line on top uh, is uh, the AX pump. Uh, what you also see, we, you have only very small ripples on, on uh, this uh, uh, flow. And that means uh, I have uh, nearly no um, yeah, pressure or, or uh, volume flow uh, um, yeah, uh, vibrations in the pump. It's uh, running very, very smoothly. And this was an excellent uh, yeah, efficiency. Okay, uh, to, so that you, op, for, op, for your understanding, I uh, uh, can show you a little uh, video here, and uh, I hope it will start now. Um, where this pump, up, there is a little problem, I think. Well, oh, no, now it's going on. Okay. Uh, what we see here, the pump is driving uh, with a cylinder, a heavy sledge, the red one, and uh, we have a, a turning point at the top, and the idea is that we uh, build an inverse pendula. So uh, we control the mass uh, uh, on top uh, by moving the sledge uh, under this uh, pendula, and uh, yeah, you can imagine we need uh, a very <laughs> uh, good uh, um, efficiency and you need a very good controller to uh, get uh, uh, to drive a system like this in this uh, accuracy. And uh, yeah, we have reached this here with only with the pump and the cylinder. So there is no valve anymore in between. And uh, yeah, uh, so you have no throttle losses uh, in, with, a, with a movement of, of, a, of a system like this. And I think this shows uh, very good uh, yeah, what is uh, possible up to now uh, and uh, what, what we can do in the future uh, with, with hydraulic systems. Yeah, and I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm very happy <laughs> that I can show you this because I, I think this is, uh, um, we ha must have solutions like this to, to use the good uh, um, ideas of hydraulic also in, in future systems. So let, let's think what I want to say is I hope, uh, I thank you for your interest and I, I hope uh, you agree that modern hydraulics is innovative, it is uh, yeah, environment friendly and uh, it is modern and at the end it has a high energy efficiency if we do it in the right way. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Lodewski. Uh, Lodewix, uh, excuse me. So I was really impressed by, by the way, I, I'm, I'm, I'm an electrical guy, so you yeah. know, I'm, I always say, okay, this is good, hydraulics, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice, high torque and so on, but now I see it's also very dynamic. Huh? This is uh, very impressive. So um, if I look at this Bucher AX pump, uh, yes. I mean, um, 
how much actually size reduction can you achieve with this novel floating cup compared with a normal piston pump, you know, okay. volume. If you said, you said mobile applications, so it's yes, always in, volume. In a mobile a uh, application, it's very important as to have very compact uh, um, pumps and motors and, and, and uh, components. And the AX pumps related, I would say, perhaps around 10% uh, less uh, space. It's more compact uh, because it's, it has a very high uh, pressure. And uh, uh, so I think it's, uh, you can replace a lot of uh, <laughs> pumps in the future with a uh, component like this. <laughs> I also one thing which I didn't know, but you, you talked about regenerative braking, basically. So, you mm -hmm. know, uh, electrical guy, I'm, I know very well, four quadrant operation. Is that also possible now with hydraulic pump? Yes, yes. Good that you uh, uh, say this question, uh, uh, ask this one, because uh, I often talked about a pump, but uh, in reality, this pump also can work as a motor. So uh, yeah, it is uh, yeah, more, uh, it's a mixture, I would say, of, ba of, of both. And uh, the reason for it is that we have this symmetrical uh, uh, construction. So we can uh, work in both ways. And you really can work in all four quadrants uh, what, what are possible. So at the end, we should spoke better of a displacement unit than a, a pump or motor. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Um, then you showed on another slide that um, you, if you would go to double valve control, that mm -hmm. there's an increase in efficiency. And, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm also aware that cost is always the main driver, and hydraulics is also one of the issues. So, how much you know cost increase we're talking here? Oh yes, okay. Of course, uh, two valves are more than one, <laughs> uh, but uh, in this way we have two smaller valves, and in comparison to one one big valve, and so the cost uh, uh, increase is not double. It is perhaps I would say twenty to thirty percent, but uh, we have this. Uh, very good efficiency so that uh, uh, after a short time we have a, a very good uh, uh, return of investment. And uh, another point is that uh, we uh, first can use the complete range uh, of uh, um, characteristic field of a differential cylinder. Mm -hmm. Because if you only drive with one valve, there occurs a lot of uh, points where you have, can have cavitation in the system and uh, this reduces uh, the, the possibilities of the cylinder if you uh, take one valve. So there is not only cost there and, and energy, there are also a lot of other uh, new possibilities in, in the system. Mm -hmm. Yes, same problem, by the way, with magnetic actuator at the end of yeah. the way. Yeah, so it's, it's in, very yeah. interesting. What, what, what does it look like volume-wise, you know, by, by adding two valves instead of, of the single valve? Uh, okay, p p perhaps we also need a little more uh, volume space for, for, for the mounting, but uh, uh, again, it's not the double of it. Uh, I, I would say uh, we can uh, build it uh, as compact as we have it uh, in, uh, uh, you know, see it today with, with one valve. Perhaps there are 10, 15 percent more space and then, then you have it. Naturally, I'm very happy that I see that the convergence of electric motors and hydraulic pumps coming together. Electrohydraulics is probably where we're going to meet in the future. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Lodewicz, and uh, thank you for coming here. For the, uh, the people outside or online here, you notice that I'm not in the screen while discussing with Professor Lodewicz, right. so we're trying to actually keep uh, our distance here uh, so to actually satisfy all the coronavirus um, precautions which we have to